If you do boxing, training, you need to make sure you're doing mobility exercises because if you're doing mobility, it's going to help increase your performance and also reduce the risk of injury. And on this video, we're going to go over the eight best exercises that you can do. And I've brought along my good friend, BJ Goodor, who is a mobility expert and also the former men's health fitness director. Now, at the end of the video, we're going to give you a bonus tip that only takes 10 minutes a day that BJ has just been telling me about that's really helped him increase his performance in fitness. So make sure you watch that one. Now, before we get into these eight amazing exercises, BG, tell us a little bit about mobility and why we should be doing it. So mobility is all about joint range of motion. And as a boxer, if we are tightening our hips, tightening our shoulders, it's gonna affect our ability to punch, defend, and attack the opponent. So by opening up these areas pre or post workout or using them for recovery on off days, you'll be better as a boxer both inside and outside the ring. So yeah, what you're seeing is these exercises won't just help you in the ring, they're gonna help you outside the ring as well, right? For sure, what, no matter whether you're squatting or working out or playing with your kids, walking up and down the stairs, running, all these drills are gonna help make sure that your joints don't hurt, take your body through a full range of motion, and especially as you get older and you can't recover as much and you get more stiff and sore just waking up every time throughout the day, these will help you stay in the game, stay loose and limber. Right, let's do it. So exercise number one is the glute bridge. It's gonna open up your hip flexors and activate the glutes. It's great. If you've been sitting a long time, those muscles shut down and you get really tight. It's also gonna allow you to get more punching power into every punch. We're gonna use a mix of a mini band and a medicine ball, and this drill is one of my all-time favorite starters. All right, so the glute bridge. Now, we have two tools to enhance the exercise. You've seen this before in yoga. People bridge up and hold. You can also do it as a dynamic rep. Now, the mini band, the benefit of this guy, you've worn this a bunch when yeah. you're boxing. It helps keep your stance so your feet yeah. come close to Great. together. Also activates your lateral hips. So when these get weak, you're much more prone to the knee collapsing in and getting some joint issues. And again, the butt is very important for overall performance. So we put the band just above the knee, and as I bridge up, I can hold it isometrically. I'm actively trying to push out against the band to activate my lateral hips. Now I can inhale down to the nose and to the belly. <sighs> Exhale up to the mouth. Think about doing you know, 10 to 20 repetitions or sets of one to two minutes of work. Now, if I want to increase the challenge, and now let's get the hip flexors going, I'm going to work on driving the knee to the chest while isometrically holding the top position. I can even, if I really want to get more hamstring involvement, see how I'm walking out? Oh, yeah, that looks hard. Full extension while maintaining my hips up, and then walk it back. And this is like doing a leg curl without the need for a machine or even a stability ball to do it. What do you think about that one? I feel like this is helping you get stronger as well. It's all about the hips. Right. Big punchers, you know, people like Mike Tyson, how do you get the power? It, it was the hips, it was the legs. Yeah. You had an incredible upper body, don't get me wrong, but if you don't have, if your hips are tight, you don't get enough range of motion behind the punches, and if you don't have your butt behind your punches, they're just arm punches, yeah. it won't be as effective. So with this, you said, what, 10 or 20 reps? Or? 10 or 20 reps, or I, I typically like to do it for time, because you can just focus on the movement and not count. Right. So one to two minutes of work, uh, you can start with 30 to 60 seconds and kind of build into it. And if you're doing circuits, you could even plug this move as like the first move in a full body circuit, right. as a way to warm up and kind of get into it. And again, it works your glutes, your hamstrings, also stabilizes your lower back, and the ball, Adding the ball can be a cool mix too. Yeah. So with this and all of the other exercises, would you see you should warm up before you do these or go in cold? Great question. Take a look at my face. <laughs> yeah. right, so it's a little hot in here, but these, these are all like designed as kind of lower level starters. Um, so yeah, they're warm up drills. Right, yeah. For your post-workout. So technically they are warming you up and very rarely will you need to warm up to do stuff like this that's very low level, more body weight focused. Okay, great. And so we showed the mini band. Now the ball, the benefit of the ball is, yeah, it might have some weight to it. And I like the Dynamax ball because it's thick and padded and you can really kind of squeeze into it. Your pelvis attaches to your lumbar spine. I'm sorry, your lumbar spine attaches to your pelvis. So your pelvic position will dictate your lower back position. So by squeezing this ball, you actually engage your pelvic floor and put your lumbar spine or lower back in a perfect position. So you squeeze the ball, you also work your adductors, you just hurt your groin. This is a way to help with groin injuries too right. by strengthening that area. So I push up, press on my hips to the sky, maintain a slight crunch in the abs so I don't extend my low back, and I can hold that for time, breathing in through the nose and the belly and then out through the mouth, or I can have repetition. And I can do that same thing, this gets really tough, is squeezing the ball simultaneously while extending the leg out at a time. I actually just felt my pelvis click into position. So it's actually a pelvic reset. And again, because the lumbar spine attaches to the pelvis, 
it might be one of the best investments you make if you have lower back pain. Right, that's great. Yeah, and again, with these ones, you said do this for time over? Yes, one to two minutes or a 10 to 20 repetitions. If you're doing the march, that's a good one to two minute drill. I mean, your butt cheek, will, they'll be cooking. Yeah, great. So this next drill I call the scat press to belly get up. And this is very important for shoulder mobility and then a progression I'll show you will also mobilize the hips. You get more punches, more punching power into your hooks. Yeah, we all want more punching power. So for this, you just need a dumbbell. What, what weight? Are you for a 25 there? I've got but, a 25. This is my light But you're really strong, mate. I, I've done these with a 100 pound bell. Oh, wow. Um, but I do most of my work light. I practice light so I can train heavy. So 25 is, is what might be pretty challenging. I'd start with even a five or 10 pound bell. You can work with a soup can, even a two or three pound light dumbbell to start because this is much more challenging than it looks and what we're trying to work here is it's called your serratus anterior muscle it looks like yep. a, a shark fin on the yep. side of your ribs that rocky four muscle when he's all shredded he's like <laughs> yeah. this you see it it is the it protracts your scapula so they call it the puncher's muscle for a reason if i'm really tight here i, I throw a jab even if i extend all the way if this is active enough it might be here versus yeah. here so now a punch that would not hit does hit very important on the jab and then in particular when i add the hip roll people that are more like arm punchers on the hooks by peeling open the hips we can create a lot more hook power on that punch too yeah. so it's a great flow uh for overall punching power and extension so that, that is perfect for for the hips because you know for the hooks yeah we see a lot of people with stiff hips they can't get the power and the rotation and then put as well not just for for them like you said the straight punches here but when you loosen up your hips and open up your hips you can really rotate on every single punch that you're throwing in boxing it's all coming from here so i'm guessing this is going to be great for that oh yeah and he, you taught me how to box and you remember the first day i was i was that guy yeah. you know I, I, th I almost died like 10 <laughs> minutes in i almost died i punched myself out but what i learned working with tony is that you got to really focus on your breath and yeah. it's it's all through the legs yeah so here's the drill we start in a fetal position to kind of organize our body and pack everything and stack it down i'm going to roll onto my back this leg is bent, this leg is straight, and then I just extend from a floor press. Now what I'm trying to do here is, the arms stay straight. All I'm trying to do is press my knuckles as high to the side as possible, exhale it up, and then I wanna pull my shoulder underground on the way down with an inhale. And this actually mobilizes the whole shoulder cap right. as well. Now after about five or 10 of those, this is advanced, okay? So you don't have to rush into this and you never force it when it comes to your lower back. But I kind of spin my arm like this. I bring that leg over the top and you can just start here. And now this is gonna really help. See, I'm trying to take that leg and trying to get my hips pressed into the floor, driving the toes in to kind of get the quad activated. And I'm stretching my hips and my low back. And now if I really want to progress this, I do a little slide and now I want to feel you want to get that dick on the mat, don't you? you know what I'm saying? <laughs> get that dick on the mat, you heard yes. that, right? That's how it's done. And now what I'm trying to do is breathe through my belly while doing this, and you can see I've dissociated my shoulders from my hips. So that's pure upper back mobility. And then if I want to tie it all together, you bring it into a full or Turkish get up, which is a full body mobility and stability move and a true lie detector test. Anything missing in the kinetic chain mobility wise will be exposed here but i show this just as a there's so many different ways you can progress this and layer it but it all starts just by learning how to move through the shoulder with a straight arm and staying relaxed breathing right and keeping that core tight throughout the full 100 percent. we do so many the patterns in there you're planking you're bridging you're lunging yeah you're holding overhead so it's a full body workout but it's also a great way to warm up. Yeah, and with this, how many reps would you do? I guess start light, start with one, and then progress for over time? Absolutely, you know, I'm, so these movements we're doing, you can do them all together, or you know, you can focus on one at a time. I love doing this as I'll say, I'll set the clock for let's say even five to 10 or even 20 minutes, and every minute I'll switch sides. Right. So I'll do like five scat presses, roll over to the belly, come back up, get up, and then whatever is left in that minute, I rest. The next minute, I just switch sides. Now, would you recommend doing this before a, a boxing session or a different session at all? Well, for a quick warm up, just do you know five scat presses and come all the way up and down. Right. Uh, and then switch sides. That yeah. would be less than two to, two to five minutes total. People say strength training, I think, especially as you get older, loaded mobility work. 
So it's a way to actually practice movements, refine them, they're easy to recover from. So I'll, again, like one of my favorite workouts is part of a workout is I'll just hit the clock for 20 minutes and I'll just flow, switching sides. As you can see right now, like everything is warm, I'm sweaty, yeah. and I'm building mobility, stability, breath, and full body strength at the same time. Yeah, that's great. And I think personally, I wanna start doing this, but I would do it maybe very light before a session. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'd start with, again, like I say soup can, or even your fist. Yeah. Um, it's, it's nice to have even a small weight in your hand, like one of those egg weights, yeah. because if you can squeeze, this creates an irradiation effect. So when I squeeze my fist, it makes all the surrounding muscles stronger as well. So you just get a little more stability. If you go with an open hand, you know, you just be kind of weak and loose. Right. But um, I would recommend anyone, five pound dumbbell to start, get the range of motion. It's all about range of motion. That's what mobility is. It's, yeah. it's a range of motion versus a load focus. Yeah. You put someone on a barbell squat, their focus is what? Getting the weight up. But with a movement like this, you're just trying to squeeze even a centimeter extra range of motion could be the difference between connecting or not connecting yeah. that punch, but it's also very good for fortifying your joints. Yeah. So number three, I call it the dirty down dog flow um, because yeah, it's like a downward dog in yoga. We add a couple extra elements to make it a bit more challenging, a bit more progressive. And what's so great about this, we're activating our core, we're mobilizing our shoulders, and we're stretching the hips and hamstrings. And one of the big causes of lower back pain, people bend over and they blow up their back. When you can't get motion through your hamstrings, your body compensates and rounds and, and that's where you get that flexion, bulging, herniated discs problem. So yeah. this is a great exercise, kind of a full body warm up. So we get in our push up position and start with a nice wide stance to make it easier. Keeping your arms straight, I want you to inhale through the nose into the belly and work to get your feet as flat to the floor as possible. Now when you're right here, you wanna to try to push away. See, see the shoulder action right there? Oh yeah. I push away and I can really kind of sink into it. I can do a little bit of a hip shake, a little twerk Right, they call it a twerk these days, don't they? <laughs> Come back in, and then I can add a push up, keeping my forearms vertical, inhale down, exhale up, and then come back. Now, to go right into that scapular press we did in the last movement, I can do a scap push up, which means my arms are straight, and all I do is I retract at the shoulder blades, bring them together, and then I push them away and round my upper back. So that's another way to do it. Why don't you try like a couple reps? So yeah, I coach you on because and I'll show a progression. I'm not very flexible, and do you have to be flexible for this? We'll what, find out. That's the thing too. It's it's, it's safe. But that's the thing too. You're you don't have to worry about hurting yourself in this movement. Um, and initially, you won't be able to get back as far. But over time, you know, doing this for five or ten reps or one to two yeah. minutes, you'll definitely make some progress on it. Okay, great. So, so um, push it, up first, spread those fingers. Uh, I, yeah. Then from here, I want to go back. There you go, stretch it now right there. Oh, that feels push good. Push away there. What am I pushing now? Try to push your shoulders as far away from your hands as you can. There you go, right there, and sink into it. So you let your head kind of sink between the biceps. He's stretching, again, so when your hands are tight, the lower back might round a bit, so as he warms up into it, there you go. Yeah, that was better. Where do you feel the stretch right now? I feel it on my coughs. Calf, Achilles. Yeah, like all my legs, that feels really 100%. good. This is it feels good. Great. Dogs do it for a reason. They actually do it like hourly, uh, and it's how they stay loose. And now the third time round, it feels even easier. Like you know, I'm, I can see I'm warming up into it straight away. Oh, yeah, after but, about three to five reps, you're warm into it. Yeah. Um, and again, like one of my favorite uh, like chest finishers, you want to get like a bodybuilding workout. You know, hit five push-ups, go back and stretch. Let me go into a push-up. You said you can add a push-up in. There you go. Perfect. So full body strengthener and stretch are all in one. Oh, and here's a really cool. That feels amazing. That really does feel good. People say, well, this gets boring after a while. No, it doesn't get boring. Yeah. You gotta progress. So I can do this on one leg. And now this really isolates the calf and hamstring on that one side. And I'm doing a one legged push up. Or I can really progress this. And now I can go one arm at a time here. Mate, you're just showing off now. Stretch. He's just I, showing off now, isn't he? Should I do the one arm push up? <laughs> yeah. Oh, mate, yeah, get, get away, get out of here. <laughs> That's great. Now, on this one, I noticed you done the demo and when you were in this position, how long do you hold it for? Because you were holding it, but you were explaining, so do you just hold it for a couple of seconds or do I, do I want to hold it for what? I, I like about three to five seconds to kind of just sit there. And again, you can, anytime you can add movement, the better. Like, you don't just have to kind of sit back through. We can add a little side to side action. I could also kind of reach you know, to help kind of get one side more than the other at a time. But yeah, about three to five seconds in each shape. Right, yeah. To plank, to 
the down dog or the hinge act action, that's gonna work really nice. All right, nice, yeah, I like that one. That's something I'll definitely be using. So number four is the ultimate hip mobility drill, and I'd also say butt builder. And what this is gonna do is, if you spend too much time in one stance, whether it be orthodox or soft paw, you tend to get imbalances and one side gets tighter than the right. other, and that causes your pelvis to shift and you get back pain. So this drill is great for that. We can use a stick to self-assist and we can also use a medicine ball to help improve the mobility as well. But initially we can just start like this, Tony. We try to get to a 90-90 position. So this front leg, it's like kind of the modified pigeon stretch in yoga. Right. But this back leg, it's like a line quad stretch in a way. So this one, we're working internal rotation in the back leg external rotation in the front leg and this is a nice way to start sometimes it's even hard to even close that gap but it just kind of it's a bit sexual <laughs> I mean, looks nice are, but we're just trying to kind of peel open those hips a bit how's that feel right now initially too sometimes people feel a little bit of tension inside the knee that's why you can just start with them a little bit wider apart yeah and then what you want to try to do is see if you can close the box by pressing the foot into the inside knee and then you take this opposite shoulder here, you can kind of use it to kind of post up on. And here's what's great too. I post up, I can use some clamshells. So I'm working my abductors and then the adductors on the way down. Sometimes too, I'll even take the foot and I'll press hard against the knee. I'll feel my pelvis snap into place. And then what I'd like to use the med ball for, and I'm gonna have you try this too so you can feel it. So you might feel like particularly that back leg is hard to get in position and that means you're missing internal rotation. You take a 20 to 30 pound medicine ball and the weight of that ball does a couple of things. One, it helps kind of give you counterbalance. You can sit in the position longer and then the weight of the ball presses and peels the hips to the floor to level out that pelvis too. Right, okay. So I'm just holding this here, right? Yeah, hold it right on that trail leg. You actually have pretty good mobility, man. This position, by the way, this is tough. Don't get discouraged. This took me like two or three years to work on. My hip, hips were so tight, but it was important because when I started to box, because it was so tight, I would get a lot of back pain post boxing. So this, because I've been working this drill so much, made a lot of improvements. I do it sometimes when I'm watching TV yeah. at night, Netflix and stretch. Yeah. <laughs> Just you sit on the ground with your kids, hold your kid. You know, again, you've got to find a way, especially as you get older and you get busy, to fit it in. And one thing you can do too, is you take a stick, baseball bat, PVC pipe, and this becomes a tool you can self-assist with and add what's called the shin box squat. Inhale down. Exhale up, and I use as much upper body assistance as I need. This is great for, again, five to 10 reps per side, or again, you set the clock for you know one to two minutes per side and just kind of flow. But it's gonna build your butt, it's gonna bulletproof your back, and it's especially important if you spend too much time in one stance. Yeah, which just about 99% of people do, which I used to do as well in one stance. So yeah, this is great, uh, what like level out 100%, yeah. Level up the pelvis. It'll your pelvis. Improve your, by the way, it'll improve your lunging. Here's the beauty of this too. I can actually, Tony's like, this guy never shuts up. <laughs> I love I can it. bring this into I'm a learning. squat, to a split squat, to a body weight squat, and work it back. So again, it's, it's, it can become a full flow. And each level, I, again, like, I love to go from the ground up because it allows you to organize your joints and builds raw strength coming up as you level up. But there's no limits to this. You can load it up with dumbbells. I do this with a 100 pound dumbbell. Because I can do it in this kind of, what's called a mechanically disadvantaged position, you're not very strong here. So if you get strong in a weak position, yeah. imagine how strong you are in a strong right, position, yeah, right? Yeah. So this is one of my favorite drills. It's an investment because initially you might be tight, you might be frustrated with it, but over time, this is the single best lower body investment I've ever made. And I wow. can along history of knee pain, playing football and stuff like that. So it's worth the investment if yeah. you can make it. And the beauty about this, you just said it right there, you can be watching TV and getting the benefits just by sitting Hanging like that. Kids switching. Yeah. A lot of times too, I will check email right. or text or messages on my phone. And again, you gotta fit it in uh, whenever you can. And But it also, if you wanna make it part of a good warm up or cool down, it's yeah. excellent for that too, between rounds. Yeah, yeah. Between rounds, minute rest, get down here. Work yeah. on your breathing in a mobility yeah. position. What you've said, but we just put all of these exercises is talking about, you know, you get getting old. If you can't do this stuff when you're 20, 30, 
40, how do you expect to do this stuff when you're 60 or 70 or 80? 100%. You know, so yeah, I think it's great, not just for boxing, but for life. The most important thing is people think, oh, I, I can't do what I used to do. No, it's less about that. You just can't recover as, as well as you used to. Right, yeah. So you got to do more now just to be at a baseline rate that you were 10, 20 years ago. Uh, but the thing is, you get smarter and, you know, you don't have to do as much training because you have such a base you built. Yeah. So some people say the, you know, the wrong side of 30, the wrong side of 40, it's, it can also be called the smart side. Right. 30 yeah. and 40. And I've noticed looking at your YouTube channel, all, all of the workouts and the videos that you give there is things that you can do at home as well. Yeah, that, that's, that's kind of my specialty. When I worked at Men's Health, we had a lot of busy parents, professionals, and people typically don't have a whole lot of time to work out. So most of the stuff that I did for them was about 20 to 30 minutes in length, even 10 minutes sometimes. Yeah. And minimal equipment, you know, body yeah. weight, bands, med balls, kettlebell, dumbbell. Uh, that you can do with you anywhere, hotel, yeah. travel, and uh, you know you got to meet people, meet people where they're at. But yeah. boxers don't need advanced equipment either. You know? Right? No, definitely. Yeah. Just this stuff applies to combat athletes as, as much as a busy mom or dad. Yeah, great. This is exercise number five, and BJ calls this the tall kneeling split switches. Got it. And, yeah. You know, I love to teach the lunge or the split squat from the ground up because it allows you to really level out your pelvis and work on your form and technique and get the right position. Again, take a baseball bat or a stick to self-assist a PVC pipe. Just again, to give you some confidence and added stability for this. And what I'm trying to do is, starting here and being smooth, I'm gonna exhale and bring one leg into a lunge position. And then I'm gonna try to bring it back without, as smoothly as possible, right? So here would be a bad example, right? That's not good. Smooth would be, what I have to do is take that back leg, drive it underground, which actually mobilizes the hip capsule Inhale it back. Now here's the crazy stuff I can do. I can do a little low lunge lift off, hold it for a couple seconds, wake up all my lower body musculature, right. inner, outer, hip, thigh, glute, hamstring, quad, lower down, switch. Low lunge lift off right there. Here's what else I can add. Work on my hip flexors and my overall hip mobility. Dig in, kind of ice pick it into the ground, Exhale up, I can add a lift off. So there's no end to what you can do in this. And it's so hard like to do, come up from like the ground with no assistance. You get rid of this guy. One of my favorite finishers, set the clock for five minutes. Stand up and just keep going. Yeah. And you will get such a good leg pump. And again, it's gonna really bulletproof your knees which are a very common area for all athletes, but even boxers yeah. that'll get injured over time. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. And that, you know, like you said, it fires up your full lower body, which in boxing, footwork is the most important thing. So this is great for that. Helps you get low. See, that's the thing too, when people, a lot of people when they do lunges, okay, yeah. nothing wrong with that small range of motion, but remember Mike Tyson in his prime, how low he would oh, get? Oh yeah. He yeah. would get all the way down. So by training from the ground up, we're getting full range of motion, more strength, it, it makes lightweight feel heavy, like your body weight feels like heavyweight because you get no momentum. Yeah. I got to create the strength without any stretch. Right. When I go up and down, I've got a stretch reflex that I'm using kind of the rebound effect of your muscles and connective tissues. But without that, it's all muscle work to come up. But again, you have to really dig this one down to make it smooth. And uh, you have people watching too that do BJJ or other combat sports too. This is great for any sort of ground game. Yeah, as well. Yeah, great. I love it. So people see the power comes from your legs. It kind of does, but BJ's got this crazy method of punching, removing your legs from the equation and just kind of using your hips, right? 100%. You know, when I started boxing, one thing I noticed is I had a hard time, you know, I wanted to make a more upper body and I wasn't getting my hips that much into it. And one thing that helps is by just doing it from the split kneeling or tall kneeling position. The only way I can throw these punches, they can be arm punches only, which is obvious, but it teaches you how to kind of mobilize your hips as you work on it. So like a nice warm up, we do a three minute round, 90 seconds each side, working in close. And you can see, look at all the, I can work on my slips. I can roll a punch, which actually kind of gets me squatting down a bit. And again, this might look like more like jiu-jitsu style stuff, but what will happen is when I stand back up, now my hips are really yeah. mobile and loose. So right. Yeah. This is a great, like a warm up round, 90 seconds per side, I, more combos, yeah. shadow box. So number seven is stance mobility and we need a stick for this the one. The stick helps, you know, again, like one of the keys to progression 
is often regression. Sometimes your body, where you have stiff knees, you've been training a long time, you come into a session a little bit cold, and it's tough to get the bends and the bounciness you want to get. So the stick allows us to get into our boxing stance, and a couple things we can just work on immediately are your toe and foot mobility, right? If you have stiff toes, you can't dig them into the ground and get the push off in the ground. You need to create that full body power behind right. the punches. Or you might get, you know, turf toe or other foot lower leg injuries because of the stiffness in those joints. So just kind of unloading here, working on that, I can do some kind of ankle motions, flex, extend, just kind of work on that. And what I found this to be really helpful for is, I remember when you first showed me how to roll, I felt like I had to bend at the waist to get yeah, there yeah. because I didn't have the, my body weight was too much. So what I started to do was I held onto this and I would sink and squat under it and kind of work that pivoting feet, rotating hips yeah. rolling pattern. And uh, you can even work on, you know, the slip aspect of this. But what I also found too, hook wise, right? So being able to turn and get low like a Mike Tyson style hook where he's, he's literally pulling from the ground it seems to come up. I can unload myself so I can sink down and I can kind of practice in slow motion different types of punches at unique angles I couldn't access without the assistance. Right. Like, you know, some of those like turning angles or twisting angles that without the stick, I would be so off balance. Yeah, yeah. So it gives me confidence to get new ranges of motion. And then when I enter into actually getting into competition or the actual workout, feeling good, I'm loose. My body had a stepping stone to now ready, unassisted to get after it. Right. So with this one, you're seeing, uh, with, like with the punches, getting used to turning. Yeah, so you kind of, kind of ice pick it into the ground with the other hand. And you see the stability it gives you? Yeah. So you can really kind of, you can stick and hold. You can turn and really can take some angles that only it seems like the elite fighters, you know, like the Roy Jones Juniors, the Mike Tysons, uh, the Ali's, they could take such unique angles because of how much confidence they had on their feet. But especially if you're a bigger guy, or you have a history of knee pain, it's tough to get to get down like right, this. Yeah. Um, so it gives you a way to kind of build up to it. And I like to do that kind of before I start my boxing, just as a way to get my stance. But don't overlook the feet, you know, just by working, you know, all these different motions through the ankle and particularly kind of digging that back toe and getting more extension into the toe. It's going to allow you to get bouncier and it's going to allow you to get more force from the ground up in your yeah. punches. No, good. I like that. And the final one is called hands and BJ's brought this from home. So what's this one all about? So people ask me, what's the number one exercise to do for longevity? I would say daily hangs. What a hang does is it actually decompresses your spine and then it hydrates and nourishes all the intravertebral discs of your spine. So if you have back pain and then if you have trouble getting your arms overhead, which is most people when you sit at your desk all day, yeah. your lats tighten, your posture gets bad. So it's improving two of the biggest areas, right? Shoulder and back. I like to do it self-assisted because it's hard for a lot of people. They don't have the grip strength or it hurts your hands or you're just not ready to do it for long right. periods of time. So what you do is you set the bar at a height that allows you to get your feet on the floor to self-assist with your lower body. If you have a higher pull-up bar, you just bring like a box or a bench over and just put your feet on the box or bench. And I can use any grip, but starting by just kind of keeping the feet on the floor and kind of just moving side to side. I want you to try this too. Yeah, I want to try this one. I can do my scapular shrugs. I'm going from like turtle head to pulling all the way back. Now again, I can do all these drills unassisted too, but again, most of the time, I like to go for about a minute or two self-assist that I can spend more time in it. We can go to a split stance, kind of work on that kind of split squat or lunge shape, going side to side. And now, then, what is this actually doing? So right here, we're mobilizing our lats. Right. And especially when we do it with our full body weight hanging down, it's basically taking, giving space between the discs. Okay. So when you box or you stand or you squat, all day long we have compressive forces on our body. This does the exact opposite, so it's so, nourishing and healing to the spine. My favorite is with the feet on the ground is you had that twist and now I'm getting that full rotation through the body and uh, man, try this, it feels so good. Just uh, opening up that whole region. And again, using the feet, you can spend so much extra time in here than you would otherwise. Again, you gotta be okay with assisting, right? Assisted movements allow you to execute them with perfect form, yeah. spend more time in them. What was the twist one? Is yeah, bring that front leg forward. All the way over there you feel that yeah all the way through and again these are these are the movements right so you can get 
Oh yeah, that's, that that's just huge on that lower spine as well. And then as you want to get more of a stretch, you can still keep your feet there, but like let your upper body take most of the weight and you can feel even more of a pull. Yeah, I feel like there. And then stay there for a second, relax. And now try to pull your ears down to your shoulders. And now pull them all the way, go the opposite way now, pull it down. There you go. So now you're doing a little scat. Oh yeah. Shrug. And this further just really improves the scapular rotator cuff area as well. Yeah. Again, a lot of people get hurt on their punches because they have very unstable shoulders. Yeah, so I've heard Joe Rogan talking about this. He does this often in the hanging. I can't remember what he said the benefits were, but it was a while ago since I heard that. But yeah, he says he does it all the time. It, spinal decompression is really the biggest thing. When, when the spine gets too compressed, that's when those discs can, can be blown out of there, right? right. Bulger, bulger actually herniates. And so it, it creates the length you need. It restores, especially, uh, most people have a real hard time getting their arms overhead. And when that happens, you get shoulder impingement or you get tears in the shoulder, labrum tears, shoulder, back, um, but also one of the most important things to fight is grip. Grip strength is a big predictor of longevity. Right. People with grip strength, they live longer. Yeah. So uh, beyond the fact that if you do this often, it'll blow up your upper body. Yeah. Oh, great. I love it. And now, before we get on to this amazing bonus tip, I just want to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, which is NAD Plus Oral Spray by Renew by Science. Now, mate, do you know the benefits of NAD Plus? No, I thought not. Most people don't, but they are unbelievable. Like, they help improve mental clarity. They increase energy and endurance, improve your mood, help with better sleep, promote DNA repair, protect against stress, reduce inflammation, and a lot more. Now, do your own research. Go on. No, he's not doing his own research. You should do your own research on this amazing product. And once you do, go to renewbyscience.com. Get yourself some of this so you don't have to have the IVs to get the NAD. And use code BOXING. Save 10%. And then when you're feeling great, come and thank me later on. Now let's get back on with the video. Now this bonus tip is fantastic. BJ's already told me it and I'm going to be definitely doing this. You want to tell the audience what this is? So one thing that I do a ton and because of the pandemic, a lot of people now do work remotely from home. But even if you work at an office, you can get a door pull up bar for like 50 bucks, put it on the door and then hourly I just jump on and I hang. Or I can work in any of these mobility drills, EHO, which means every hour on the hour. So you've got a typical nine to five, 10 hour work day. You sit all day, you get stiff, you get sore, you get low energy, you gotta rely on stimulants to get through the day. But by every hour, initially kind of setting an alarm just to remind yourself or putting in your appointment book, you get up and you do one of these drills for at least one minute up to five minutes. By the end of the day, we're talking 10 to 50 minutes of mobility you've just snuck in, you peppered in throughout the day. Right. Even if you don't train that day, you've done things that'll help prevent injury, improve performance, stimulate muscle gain, burn some calories, but ultimately every time you do this too, what happens? You get energy. Yeah. You get blood flowing throughout your body and you just, it's so key for longevity. People, especially as they get older, it's not about necessarily looking sexy or having huge muscles. It's about being able to play with your kids, being yeah. able to walk when you go on vacation and do you know adventurous activities. And uh, that's the investment, this, this the EHO investment makes, makes a world of difference. And uh, it's, it's completely changed the way I look at fitness. Right. Now that you've learned all about mobility, you should learn how to warm up the full body. And that's why I created this video right here, so you can click here and learn about the full body warm up.